So some time ago, we talked about the fact that the brush asset system is coming over to Blender 4.2 and we did talk about how this would definitely change the entire workflow for Blender. And today we have a testable version of that release, which allows us to see some of the cool features that will be coming with this. At the time we made this mention, we looked at the entire backstory about the asset system and looked at how this has actually changed the game, especially when you work with Blender. And of course, within the time we made this video, this was currently available for a branch version of Blender 4.1. And today they've updated that and you can definitely go ahead and get it. And for those who like to get this, all you need to do is go over to blender.org, go over to the download section, scroll all the way down, go over to Blender Experimental, go over to the branch, and right here, you would notice that we have the Blender 4.2.0 brush asset project and this is currently available for windows mac and also for linux and with that said let's dive directly into blender and see all of the cool features that this now comes with and with the brush asset project version of blender 4.2 alpha opened right here let's go ahead and import our settings from 4.1 so how you get to look at the brushes here is relatively easy and of course, we're going to talk about how you can work with them, customize this, and a couple of things you need to know about these brushes. So the very first thing is you need to click, drag out a new panel, click right here, go over to the asset browser. Now within the asset browser, if you click on the drop down and go over to essentials, you'll notice a couple of changes are now available. So unlike the curve tools that has to do with hair that we have with the previous version, at this point, we do have all and under all we have brushes and this consists of the curve sculpt, the grease pencil and also meshes with curve sculpt having three different categories, the grease pencil having four and the mesh having four plus sub sculpt categories for the sculpting and double sub categories for general. So at any point in time, you're trying to create stuff that has to do with hair, then the curve sculpt is where your focus needs to be. So this includes the formation, density, general, and for grease pencil, you've also got the draw, the paint, the sculpt, the weight paint, and for meshes, we do have a whole lot of them. So this is where I believe a lot of people would actually work, especially if you're into sculpting, playing with textures, playing with vertex, or you're playing with weight. And you'd notice that there's some similarities across these three different categories, especially with the four different brushes. And where we start noticing a few distinction in terms of the brushes includes the scope, the grease pencil and the curve scope. And how you work with these things are extremely simple. So in this case, I'm going to drop a grid and we're going to scale this grid by two. Other things we need to do for the grid is simply come right here and add a subdivision of four. Let's go ahead and apply that subdivision, make this a shade smooth. And from here, if you click or even double click, you would not be able to use this on the mesh. So how you get to use these brushes on the mesh is like this. You need to go over to the workspace for these things. So in case you're trying to do some sculpting, you need to be on the workspace to have access to the brushes, some texture painting, you need to be on the workspace to have access to that, texturing and so on, you need to be within their respective workspaces for you to have access to it. And in the case of sculpting, you would notice that we've totally lost all of the icons here as this now compensates for that. It is also worth mentioning that if you're trying to see all of the names for these brushes, you can find them right here by clicking on this button and turning on names. You can of course go ahead and increase the size and reduce this. And this is pretty brilliant. This reminds me so much of what you have with Autodesk Modbox as Modbox simply gives you this very same layout. And this brings that simplicity to how you get to sculpt with tools like this. Another impressive thing that you can do here is regardless of the number of brushes you have, you can add these categories and turn off some of them. So if you like to work with just some brushes from your sculpt branch, probably you don't want to work with the painting. You don't want to work with the cloth. You can turn that off. In terms of working with the general stuff, if you just simply want to work with add and subtract brushes, and maybe you want to work with some utility brushes, those are the brushes that you would find right here. You can, of course, go ahead and change these things if you want to get things to work according to how you want them to be. So with this here, you can start painting and layering stuff. So let's just go ahead and increase this brush and I'm going to select the layer. Now within the layer brush, we can actually layer some stuff and you can see how clean, smooth and quick this is. So this is very useful, especially if you're into making panels and stuff, you're definitely gonna like this one. So you can paint things, however you choose. One thing which we spotted out, which is pretty different from other versions of Blender, is right here, we do have something called Canvas. It's also worth mentioning that with this particular build, some hotkeys do not work. And this includes hotkeys for like the Sculpt Expand and some masking hotkeys. So at several times when I tried working with the masking, these eventually broke because of the density of the file I'm working with. 
and most times if you're doing the sculpt expand this may also break so i would simply suggest that if you either want to use the sculpt expand the masking or potentially you like to use the cloth brush that you should actually do this on a lower resolution and build up with the multi-res as you progress else there are chances that these might potentially crash but with that said there are more things that you can now do with this you can also notice that the masking brushes are left right here from masking to face set brushes they are not part of the brushes that we have going on here and speaking about brushes they did mention that about 80 plus brushes will be coming with the sculpting tool but currently we have about 32 brushes and i think this is fair because these are currently the brushes that ships with blender there are some other interesting things which has to do with creating your very own brush so in this case for example if we're trying to play with the blob tool we can simply go ahead and do a simple paint so i'm just going to go in increase the strength and drop the radius all the way down so we can add some blob right here add some blob right here and that looks pretty cool but what if you like to create a brush that actually does something slightly different Probably you have an alpha, you want to create your own custom brushes. How you can do this is extremely simple as we've already talked about this in the previous video. But with this one, it is pretty more interesting because at this point you can now create some subcategories that you can load up right here. And to do that, all you need to do is tap in on the keyboard, go all the way to where you have your tools. And from here, you need to click and make a duplicate. So once you make a duplicate of the asset, you can define this how you want. So in this case, I would like this to be the blob custom drag dot. And I would like this to exist under a catalog called my brushes. So simply dial that in, click on the plus sign and click on the word save. Now, this is where the magic begins. From here, you can start making adjustments to this brush however you want. Probably I'll like this to be magnified a little bit more and I would like the strength to be exactly what we have. I can scroll all the way down and we can start dealing with the stroke. And since I want this to be a drag dot, we're going to specify that as one and we can increase the hardness. Probably this has to be a bit more of a hard brush. And we can definitely go over to the advanced section and turn on some auto masking features if this is also something that we're going for. If there are multiple options that you like to play with, you can go ahead and specify them right here. So once you have this ready, you can now go ahead and update this asset. So once you update that, this brush automatically becomes the brush that you have. So you now have that brush right here. So with this here, I can simply go down and drop the inputs to one and potentially just keep this to become something more spherical. So in this case, this is the brush I am going for. And once I have this, I can go all the way up, click right here and update the asset. And this becomes our custom brush. Now, for you to have access to this brush here, you need to click on this button and you'd notice that my brush catalog now exists here. So you can click on that and automatically you have that brush right here. So at any point in time you're working with any of these tools, you can definitely switch from one tool. Say for example, if we're thinking about working with a general tool, say maybe the grab tool, for example, tapping F on the keyboard, we're gonna raise this about some point like so. We can always go back to my brushes, have this selected, and we can create some magic with it, something like so. So depending on what you're trying to do, you do have all of these options and you can work with it. And this is exactly the same thing that you have with all other tool set. For texturing, there is basically some cool stuff that you can do here. Of course, it gives a little bit of a report. And for sure, the folks at Blender Foundation have already announced the fact that there's a texturing project on its way. And this texturing project will bring about a more procedural way of creating textures and texture painting in Blender like you can do in Substance. And it's definitely promised to be more of a procedural way of texturing in Blender. And to start texturing is basically very simple. So just like we mentioned with the sculpt brushes, you do have all your brushes right here and you can see their namings right over here. If you click on this button, you can go ahead and add a base color. So this is the base color that we want, which I'm gonna set this all the way to white and click on OK. You can define the sizes if you want here. And in this case, because we're doing a quick example, you can simply go ahead and have that. If we would like to start painting, we can select the paint texture brush and we can select the color that we want and we can start painting whatever and however we want. So this is basically what we want to do. For the texture window, there is a little bit of, I think, a little bit of a drag when you're using the blur brush. So if I go ahead and select the blur texture brush and we start texturing, in most cases, you would experience some sort of drag. So you would experience a sort of drag, especially when you're blurring some edges like so. So there is a little bit of a drag that just happens. And the same thing is something I would say happens across some of these brushes. 
I think in terms of performance, this will be improved before those versions or before this release actually comes out. So with this, you can now proceed to do even more stuff. In terms of displacement, you can also add some very interesting displacement features to whatever you're creating. So whether you're thinking about creating textures that just simply has to do with roughness, metallicness, normals, displacement, bump map, specular IOR, or maybe you just want to do some cool stuff with the base color, at this point, you can now simply do all of that. So if you would like to paint your displacement, you can go ahead and paint in the displacement how you want and make sure that before you render that you set these two cycles and set the displacement to displacement plus bump. And it's also worth mentioning there's a couple of cool and interesting features that might be coming to Blender 4.2. Of course, we've not announced all of the features coming to 4.2, the alpha, but we're making a list as the days progress. And once we have something that is worth making a full video for, we're going to talk about some of the cool features that will be coming over to Blender 4.2 and some features that are already in the build that is currently available. And speaking about this, currently, if you simply look at the shading section, by default within the material output, what we have is the surface, volume, and displacement. And I think for 4.2, just like what we have right now, we might be getting thickness. And thickness would simply allow us to do some very interesting stuff when texturing in Blender. And I think this is just creating that ground for the texturing projects to land completely. It's also worth mentioning that one of the quality of life features that we've already talked about in the past might be making it to Blender. Because at several times, we've already talked about the fact that if you're working in Blender, most times locking the camera requires you to put a simple key. At this point, something that was taken out has now been brought back in. And it is this simple feature, locking your camera to view. This is something that has always existed in every other DCC app. And one of the times I did speak with the folks at the Blender Foundation, and they said, you know, this might come back, this might not come back. They were pretty unsure about it. But it's pretty interesting to see that it is now here. There's also a free add-on by Blender Bob, which actually allows you to do this if you're using any other version of Blender. But getting this version to actually ship with it might be something pretty interesting. And of course, if you always wanted to have hotkeys with this, it is pretty simple as all you need to do is just go over to view, right click, and you can define a hotkey which you can use. So this is it. The brush tools are now available. And for anyone who is thinking about exploring all of this and you would like to work with all of these hair tools for adding curves, combing these curves, smoothing, pinching, growing them, and doing some very interesting things, or potentially you're into vetus painting, texture painting, weight painting, and you like to create your own custom brushes and work with this however you want, then you can simply go over to the experimental branch, download the brush asset version of the 4.2 alpha, and start playing with it. Of course, there's a couple of tools and features that might need a bit more polishing, but other than these, most of the features and functions are super solid, and I would suggest that you go ahead and start playing with them. Links to all of this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.